It's a great pleasure for me to be here. What you are seeing is the launch vehicle of GSLV Mark II. It consists of solid, liquid, and cryogenic stage. Of course, I worked in both uh, all uh, solid and liquid and uh, cryogenic uh, stages. Well, some of you maybe, <coughs> you know, might have felt proud and patriotic to see the Indian flag on the top. Maybe some of you think the marvelous of the technology, advanced technology in this system. Very few, maybe the taxpayer will think how much money might have gone inside this uh, to build. So these are all the thinking in that. But today, I am here to give the glimpse of some of the, well, <coughs> you know, some of the mysteries, back slides or thinking, what might have gone to bring such things. So I will try to tell, maybe the fear or failure, obviously achievements. I am Jnana Gandhi. I come from a very humble beginning. I try to help my mother in the field in the morning. And some, most of the time, I will be in a small grocery shop with trying to help my father. And uh, maybe it's a small touched uh, roof uh, school. Sometimes we'll go there, a teacher will be there, and kind of thing. And uh, high school, I have to walk nearly about 10 kilometers from my village. Well, uh, those days it is very common. So I also did the uh, same thing. Uh, during that time only I used to study by walking, because that is the time I used to get. So time management, plus how to do the work with minimum resource. Maybe those days electricity was not there in my village till my SSLC, so nothing. So I could uh, come up a little bit with, uh, well, fairly a good uh, school education and college. I got my uh, <coughs> mechanical engineering in 1968. Maybe there's a very bad time in India, no job. Even though in whole Tamil Nadu there was only five engineering college, but today if you throw a stone, definitely it will fall one of the engineering college. <laughs> of course, everywhere. And even with five engineering college, we could not get job, and it was very difficult. I applied and applied, and luckily I got some SSTC on small this thing. I applied. Somewhere they written what you want to write more here, anything you like. So I said, I see the horizon, you know, the sky in the night, the stars are attracting something. I like the invited, you know, for the interview. So I went there, and one of the committee members, still I remember very well, he asked, uh, radiation is T to the power of what? Maybe in the, my lucky number is four. I said four. So later only I came to know the question he asked by is not, none other than Dr. Kalam. <laughs> So I got uh, selected. I started my working in uh, initially under Dr. A.E. Mutunayam. He is the father of the propulsion in India. So I could get the good. Uh, we are very few people. Whatever you want, you can do. So those days, Tumba is evacuated from you know the uh, near the seashore, and uh, uh, <coughs> some of the fishermen have been evacuated. So I, I was given a small tiled house. So in Malayalam, they used to call Barhev Nailam, nothing but a ghost house, a tiled house. So they gave me a small mixture to mix the solid propellant and rubber base, you know, Kerala. So I used to, we used to get some rubber latex and mixed with ammonium perchlorate and make a small rocket, maybe a you know, 200 gram and kind of thing. I was a young engineer, so mixed it. Every time, whenever I see that propellant, a lot of blowholes. So as an engineer, why blow hole? Put on both sides some plate and tighten it and put it in the oven. Well, it was almost like 11.30. I have to walk a kilometer to take my food. So I started walking. You believe it or not, it was a big explosion. So the oven got ripped open. So there was a commission why this fellow has done something and kind of thing. Then later they said, OK, you start. So I carried out in solid propellant like uh, all sounding rockets like RS-75, 100, 200, 560. My work was loading the propellant inside the rocket motor. Very dangerous work, but still. I like the work, so I, it is very interesting. So one day, I think uh, 
you know that uh, SLV Kalam was the leader and the fourth stage, first time they cast the propellant. As usual, there was a very big blowhole. They want to salvage the casing. So they came to me, why don't you remove the propellant and give the casing uh, technicians and uh, we removed almost 99% of the propellant if you have removed it. So last day I have brought, everybody has appreciated the work. You, morning 8 o'clock I came and gave the instruction to two of my technicians, you do how to remove. There was a telephone ringing in my cabin, it is outside there. So I rushed, you believe it or not, there was a big fire. So there was a small spark, it ignited the whole engine. There was a lot of motor like RS-7500, this, that, all started firing inside. I started crying, running, I don't know what to do. Well, then uh, finally there was a very big uh, committee, so I was asked. Then luckily, one of the men said, if you do work, you will do mistake. If you keep quiet, you, after all it's like, no government office, you can go and sit and also you can go. But if you do work, there is a best. So I learned, okay, never afraid of any failure. So that is the first lesson I could learn from that uh, fire. Later we made a lot of uh, motor, uh, solid motor and uh, one of the motor I have taken to Roy Braley. Those days, you know, uh, strategically we required, without the runway, the aircraft has to take off. So we made the rocket and take it to Roy Braley and attach it in the belly of the HF-24. And as usual, I used to talk a little more. On the night, previous night, I, you know, we were all discussing. I said, I don't know who is the unfortunate pilot who is going to sit tomorrow on the aircraft. So you, very few minutes, somebody tapped on me. Yes, Sardaji was standing. I am the pilot I am going to sit tomorrow on you. <laughs> then I said, sorry, sir, my rocket is so good. It is reliable. You need not worry about it. Don't worry, Gandhi. We will see tomorrow. So next day, you believe it or not, First uh, success, there all, the aircraft was uh, took off without the runway. It was a beautiful scene, and everybody appreciated and all those things. Around 1985, so the management asked, why don't you start uh, cryogenic engine? So, well, from even if you believe it or not, I, I, I'm, I'm first time I hear the word also what is. So I started, I went to the library and started collecting and all those things. So I started like uh, my solid rocket with a small in. So I started the cryogenic. So what to use? It is only a liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. But we don't have that kind. So we start, I started with a gaseous hydrogen and gaseous oxygen, a single element. It will not fire immediately. So I started uh, working on uh, that. And uh, <coughs> somehow the Americans didn't like, OK, I should not tell, OK, geopolitical reasons. We were asked to get out from Russia. So whatever I learned uh, in eight months, whatever I have seen, I have come back and prepared a project report and submitted to the government to make a cryogenic upper stage. And uh, government was kind enough to give me 300 crore project. I was the first project director to, to make. <laughs> you believe it or not, the stainless steel is cracked like a mirror. First time in my life, stainless steel cracking like a mirror I have seen. So all of us, they sat. So it is a big blow for us. What to do next? So I didn't, uh, <coughs> then I called my engineers and sat and we got through the basic fundamentals of, uh, you know, from uh, how the bracing time, you know, capillary actions will take place, how much gap. Finally, what I did the mistake in solid propellant, I didn't allow it to expand, it explode. Here it cannot explode, it cracks. So the dissimilar materials, it has to expand at 1020 degrees. So I allowed, next time it has come all right. So we built the engine and we have taken it to Mahendragiri. By the time, the out of 300 crore, 100 crore, I put the you know, world class uh, test facility to bring the hydrogen and 50 crore for producing the hydrogen plant and all those things were ready, so we brought it. So the first engine we fired, Kasturi Angan was there at that time. Well, uh, luckily it didn't explode, but it melts. First engine, as usual, my, this thing. So <laughs> second engine, you believe it or not, it was, it is, can I go to the next slide? Uh, 
So this is the engine fired. Of course, I, a lot of uh, videos are available, but I'm not showing. So this is the test facility we fired. And the flame, you know, it removes all our, uh, whatever the tiredness for lost so many years we were running. Everything was vanished. We have become fresh. So uh, we, can, we have to go because this is the hydrogen is the future uh, you know, uh, 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 energy for our uh, automobiles. Only issue is hydrogen is not available. But I have given a solution for that also. You can harvest the hydrogen from the fertilizer plant, from the refineries. You take that itself will come for more than 40,000 buses we can run per day. That much gas we are leaving out. So all those things are still under this one. It may be coming all right. Maybe in future we can see. But at that time, maybe uh, <coughs> two youngsters, IIT uh, gold medalists, they worked in VSSE for eight years. They took voluntary retirements and started a private company called Skyroot. So they approached me, sir, why don't you help? You have done all three these things. I said, fine, I don't have any issue. So I start uh, four years back, I joined in Skyroot. They want to develop a rocket for putting only a 200 kg satellite in low Earth orbit because today a uh, lot of a lot of demand is there for a small satellite to put on low Earth, Earth orbit. They all started using LNG, liquefied natural gas. So I also thought, why not we will use liquefied natural gas? So I started with again a single element <laughs> here using LOX and the LNG using a 1,000 Newton small uh, uh, test. I ask our engineers to design and guide them, what are the small test facility, and procure the LNG and everything. And I fired the LOX LNG uh, last year. It went successful, no explosion, and it has gone. <laughs> Can you go to the next one? Yeah, these are all the three uh, <coughs> launch vehicles they are planning. First vehicle is all three solid. And uh, first stage, there is no cryogenic. It has but liquid for roll control and other things that also I already developed. Second one is the engine uh, which is going to have a cryo. Maybe next series of vehicle, it will have our uh, cryo also. Can you go to the next slide? So this is the one. Very interestingly, why I'm telling is adaptability. I don't want to tell my engineers, hey, I have done only like that. I will not change my mind. No. So. The present technology is 3D printing. So those days, you know, I have done it um, <coughs> Mumbai, Godrej, bracing the copper and stainless steel and struggled and all those things joining. The yield is not good. But today, you see the right side of the 3D printed one very nicely. With all, it is also double wall with all the grooves and everything. You believe it or not, within 10 days, we built the engine. Generally, it will take six months. So the engine has been built. Even the injector also a single component. So these are all titanium, I printed that also. So with those two, with liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, sorry, liquid LNG and liquid oxygen, we fired for more than 20 seconds. It went very well. Now we are having a program to increase to 2,000 Newton. Maybe next month or within two months, I may fire the other engine also. It is also almost ready. So these are all my thing. Here, uh, that's why I'm trying to tell initial period, the perseverance, work. Second time, I started learning. Even at the, the age is not a factor for learning. And more important is, whatever you learn, you please share it with others. That's what I prefer. And another one is uh, adaptability to the, you know, mingle with the youngsters. They have a lot of new, new, you know, thing. And to, uh, today, uh, computer, you know, that gives uh, very good uh, challenges and everything can be solved. So everything can be simulated. You can see whether the engine will work or fail. That much, you know, confidence the youngsters are giving to me. So that kind of a thing I have seen. Can you go to the next graph? So generally, I used to tell only two slides towards my talk. You could see the goal is very close. Don't get uh, dejected and you have to work hard. Maybe you may be tiring. You may think we may not achieve. No, you will definitely achieve. That is my uh, thing. And second one is always I used to tell attitude. Attitude is very important. 
If you break a egg, your chick dies, your life ends. But if a egg breaks off its own, the life begins. So all of you, from you, has to come. I wish all uh, good luck to all my uh, students and have a nice uh, this thing. Thank you for being here.